You ever talk to your professors, be like, look, I can't make it. I got to go drive a race car. Yeah, they, they're all cool with it. <laughs> Ooh, can I do that thing? Bang. That's a lot of information. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Welcome to Crypto Fast Track. I'm here with Raja Karuth, the iRacing star and driver of the market rebellion car. Today we're going to be talking about what it takes specifically to get started in the crypto industry and we're going to be going with the basics here today. I'm Raja Karuth, driver of the number 44 market rebellion Chevy in the NASCAR Xfinity series and I'm here with CJ, expert, don't get it twisted, crypto analyst and he's gonna tell me everything about cryptocurrency because I don't know anything. So Raj, um, you're a sophomore in college. How is it being a you know, iRacing star and also going to school? What's that like? Yeah, CJ, um, going to school and racing, not only virtually, but in real life is a pretty tough task. But I mean, my teachers are, are chill about it as long as I kind of communicate with them and do my stuff before it's due. Um, and just manage my time well with, with the commitments I have throughout the day and the week. It's pretty chill, to be honest with you. Like, I'm not saying it's easy at all, but I mean, if I am doing what I'm supposed to do, then then it's pretty fine. And uh, what are you majoring in? Motorsports management. Nice. And, at uh, Winston-Salem State University. So CJ, people talk about this, not only in racing, but in general. I do not know what it is. So can you please explain to me what is a blockchain? Basically, just a chain of blocks from the most like very simplistic uh, perspective of and literal like like Legos or like like computational blocks within a computer um, or a computer network. So, in order to use the Bitcoin network, basically there are these blocks that are solved every ten minutes um, by miners, and within these blocks are actual transactions. And so, in order for your transaction to go through, um, a miner has to validate it. Um, going through a process um, and then once those blocks are solved every 10 minutes then your transaction will go through. So that's the basic uh, architecture of a blockchain but more importantly um, it has accomplished something that was not previously possible before and that is the ability to verify a transaction without needing a third party intermediary like a bank like Chase. So ultimately, with that technology, you now have a monetary system or a um, payment method or a currency that is not reliant on any government or any uh, institution such as Chase or Bank of America. So it's like having, um, you know, cash of the internet. And all of that was enabled um, by the invention of blockchain technology in 2009. So let me get this straight. So Blocks is something that's solved. It's like a puzzle or not a puzzle, but um, it's solved because of a transaction that's made or the transaction is made and then the block is solved or so, mined or whatever. Yeah, so if I was to send Bitcoin, I would hit, you know, send to whoever recipient I would want to send to, say if I want to send you some Bitcoin, which we could do after this. But, yes. um, but uh, yeah, so I would hit broadcast. That transaction would then be grouped into a batch of other transactions known as like the mempool. And then um, you have miners who then will solve a problem um, and verify that your transaction is valid and then it will go through. The miners as a result will get paid in a little bit of Bitcoin for their service and then your transaction will go through. So they take a percentage of the transaction as their compensation for it? Yes, um, they have, they take a small um, percentage, but what their primary payment comes from is new Bitcoins that are created every 10 minutes with a new block. So it's just, there's an infinite amount because there are some created every 10 minutes, basically? Well, we can get to that. Oh. Um, there's actually a finite amount. Um, there'll only ever be 21 million. Um, there's about 18.5 million right now. But um, basically the way that Bitcoin is able, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but basically the way that um, Bitcoin um, like can maintain decentralization or um, have a finite supply is 
that reward of Bitcoin that's given out each block decreases by half every four years. So you have this exponentially decreasing relationship of new Bitcoins coming onto the market, yet it still is enough for the miners to have an incentive to validate the network. So this is gonna go on until the year 2140. That's when the last Bitcoin will be mined. And at that point, the miners will just uh, be incentivized by small transaction fees. Every four years, you get the supply uh, schedule. You know, the amount of Bitcoins that are given out is cut in half. So that kind of, that historically has led to these supply shocks where you have a relatively stable amount of supply um, or, or even a decrease of supply. And as long as demand remains constant, we have a, had a tendency historically to increase. Doesn't mean we'll do it um, in the future, but that's been the historic economic kind of relationship. In terms of inflation and like the Bitcoin, like more Bitcoins being added to the network, it's not like that bad um, if you consider that there's 18.5 million, which is like already about 80, over 80% 80 of the supply that is like in circulation. So you're only gonna have a little bit. And if you compare that to something like dollars, um, but I think the stat was like 20 per, or like 40% of all US dollars or something were printed this year. Um, back in 2008, the money supply was also quadrupled. Um, so when you compare it to, um, uh, currencies, specifically like fiat currencies, it actually is relatively scarce in its supply issuance. That's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. So blockchain technology is the backbone of Bitcoin. It is a distributed ledger that allows us to send money to one another um, without any intermediary, such as a bank or a government or any type of third party. So I send Bitcoin to you. The blockchain technology enables us to transact with one another without having to have, you know, Chase or Bank of America or anything like that um, verify that the transaction has gone through. Essentially, it is just code that is agreed upon by many network, uh, many computers throughout uh, a vast network all throughout the world. I kind of understood that. Progress. <laughs> cool. Fantastic. All right. The, the, also, like. The tech doesn't really matter. Like, as long as it works, like, think about it. You don't need to know what HTTP is in order to have the benefits of the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyways, let's continue. That was a real I understood that reference. I really understood that. <laughs>